In the beginning, one of the first things God did was separate the light from the darkness. Then in Genesis 3, Satan whispers to Eve, perhaps the darkness is light. I am a woman whose body was created sacred, but her sanctity was broken, and now her body feels degraded. My name is Carmen. Um, I am a recovered compulsive eater. The demon of idolizing food has chased me around for many years. Um, the fact that I'm standing in front of you right now, able to share this story in itself, is a miracle. I can't explain it. Um, only God can explain how I'm here speaking to you today when there's so many people still out there uh, enslaved in their relationship with food. Um, I'm going to tell you as much as I can of how it happened. At the age of 15, I believed popularity and male attention to be the root to all happiness. I would change everything about me for a boy to tell me I was attractive. There was nothing but broken pieces to reassemble and anger at myself for never being enough. The only female friends I could find around me were girls who had no concern for me, I would follow them around like a dog and desire desperately for them to finally love me. I hated myself and was self-obsessed all at the same time. I idolized my own appearance and would spend hours in the mirror thinking about how attractive I was and wondering when someone would give me the attention I wanted. It never came and I would frantically search for some new diet, self-help video or way of making friends that would change me. While searching for love in the attention and approval of my peers, I stumbled across a YouTube video of someone sharing their weight loss journey. I paid careful attention to what they said about calorie counting and I instantly lit up. I thought I had finally found a solution that made sense. I would lose weight and I would finally get the attention I desired. I began this process and it mostly worked for the first few weeks. I ate barely anything and saw a change in my body. Sooner or later, the cravings took over and I couldn't help the incessant desire to binge eat. I gave into it and was left with only guilt and confusion. I would get angry at myself, lonely, stressed, covered in acne. For every problem, food and perfectionism was the solution. A new diet, another snack to take the edge off, a new psychology podcast that would finally teach me to eat again, but nothing worked. John 6, verse 27 says, Do not work for the food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Every day I was laboring for the food that spoiled rotten inside me, for attention that spoiled rotten inside me. Meanwhile, I was wasting away and starving for the real bread of life. I reached the point where I lived in a continuous cycle of binging and restricting. I wanted to stop, and yet no amount of willpower was enough to get the beast out of me. I failed every single day to eat the way I wanted and started to feel hopeless and insane. My body and mind had become fundamentally different to other people when it came to food. Once I took that first compulsive bite, I would keep eating and had no amount of control over the amount I take. Then once I finished a binge, even when I was adamant that I would not eat any more than I needed or restrict again, I couldn't fight off the twists of my mind that told me it will make it better. Or just go back to that diet again, cut out more foods, it will work this time. You'll finally be perfect. When those thoughts came, I couldn't discern what was true from what was false in my head. It was around this time that I had my first encounter with God. The morning after a binge, I was feeling numb, and I decided to pour myself a bath. I got in and sat there for a while. At, what, at one point, I felt a weird urge to get on my knees and close my eyes and talk to something outside myself. I didn't even believe in God at that time. Um, I started to speak some words I can't even remember, and in that moment, I had a vision come into my mind of being a little child in a park. 
I felt so overwhelmed with love. The sense of love I had when my parents were taking care of everything in my life and I was still pure. I broke down in tears. In Psalm 57 verse two in the English Standard Version it says, I cry out to God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. I had no idea where God would take me beyond that day. He had intervened. From that day onwards, God was very patient for me um, as I searched for him in yoga, in addiction recovery groups, in spiritual podcasts, in YouTubers, in Buddhism, and in nature. I had to try a lot of wrong things before I found the right thing. One day, I crossed paths with a person who would change my life forever. I studied the Bible. It took me four months of wrestling with scriptures and not submitting to God's plan for my life until things finally clicked into place. I saw the truth. I saw who I was and what I had done to cause so much damage to my body, mind, and soul. God took all my sins away and gave me a purpose. The bread of life was carrying out the will of his son. If you can relate to what I have shared and would like help, reach out to me after this finishes. The best possible thing you could do for my recovery is to come and ask me help with yours. As women who struggle with food, we were not built to suffer on our own, but to glorify God through healing one another. I am recovered. I am free, as you can be. I love you, and this is my story. Mm -hmm.